Hi, welcome to the Coffee Chat Show here on Buzzing Pattaya, the show where we talk about things that are happening right here, right now, as well as general news, tips, information and advice now. Welcome back to part two. Joining me is the Motley crew here. How you doing, guys? How you doing, my man? Steve, Hi, good man. to see you, buddy. Mark, uh, Brian, you, you don't sorry, look like you've changed. Is this the coffee show? Is, yeah. Where's the coffee? Well, it ain't arrived. <laughs> I mean, you want to sort coming, of, is it? Okay, good. <laughs> it ain't here. Now, it's tired, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in part one, now, if you watch part one, if you missed it, don't worry, there's a link in the description below. Check it out. But in part one, we were talking about, believe it or not, I know they don't look old enough, but believe it or not, they've got a combined total of 75 years experience here, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. Talk about living the dream. <laughs> Or are they? Because the purpose of this one is that we want to cover topics that perhaps maybe some of you watching this video would, would not want to address, but you're going to watch this and think to yourself, wow, that's strong stuff. Now, I want to turn to you first, Steve, if I may, please. You were working in all the bars, you were living the dream, you were, you know, you were going off and doing all these incredible things. But it came to an abrupt halt, didn't it? When you were diagnosed with cancer. I mean, yeah. talk to me about that. I mean, that moment when you were sat there and they said to you, I'm, I'm sorry, but you've got cancer. I mean, how did that make you feel? Just devastated. You don't know where to go, where to turn. We've been owning my own bar for 20 years or whatever and running my own place. Everybody came to me with their problems. Then suddenly I've got this problem and I'm thinking, I've got nobody to turn to, to tell my problems to. Mm. I was actually going through a messy divorce at the time, which was more pressure as well. And when you get diagnosed with anything or anything like this and you have to go through the treatment and that it just makes your morale go down so low and that and the time when you're not working or doing something your mind's thinking about bad things about mm. what's going to happen and what you're going to do you need to share it with somebody to yeah, you help you to get it out of your system mm. i can imagine you know and forgive me for asking what's probably a very stupid not obvious question but i mean when you got that news i mean did your world just fall apart i mean what, what was your reaction yeah, it, it did basically yes and it was so, oh, the pain I went through with it as well, with all the different treatments. You didn't we said they were going to put a camera up you which day they were going to do it or whatever. And mm. it was then we splitting up with an ex-wife or whatever, which we drifted apart many years before that. But I, I couldn't even turn to her and say anything, you know. And I was sort of on my own and with it. And it was, it was hard to bottle it up and... You couldn't Why really didn't you tell talk people. to anybody? Why didn't you share it with how you felt? What was what was holding you back to go out to people that you know and say, guys, listen, I've got cancer and I need to talk about it? Well, I always thought it was bulletproof and I always mm. thought it was a leading figure. Everybody came to me with their problems and that. Mm. And I never never imagined anything like this coming out to happen to me in my life. It, you just think you're bulletproof and that's what happened. It's and have you spoke to people since? Yes, yeah. And, and when you decided to speak to me, I mean, what was the, the process in your mind when you sat there and thought, OK, I've got this this uh, cancer now, which is the dreaded word. And, you know, I've got to take all these treatments and everything. And I'm really struggling. What made you say to yourself, I need to talk to someone? What were you at just an all time low that you thought if I don't talk to someone, I, you know, the, the worst could happen? What made you talk? <sighs> it's very hard to think what, back what happened there. Because I was so lonely at the time. Mm. I knew so many people and everything. Then suddenly it was like I was cast on my own and the world had deserted me. And I think it's just... I think maybe because I have a son in England, I, I rang him up and, mm. and mentioned it, which helped me power myself through it, fight it, to, to be there for him. Mm. It was a very difficult time in my life. It's very hard to talk about it now even, but... Mm. But it's a, me, it's a, a, men, a men thing. We're not supposed to talk about it, are we? A weaknesses and no, stuff like that. It's right. It is a yeah. men thing, and we're not supposed to talk about it. I yeah, mean, we hide right. our feelings, don't we? I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. lucky. I, I'm yeah. like you. I mean, I, I had Mark around me when, when I was in a bad way, and my son. Mm. Um, but you don't know what to do. You don't know where to turn. You don't yeah. know who to talk to. Yeah, and I mean, it must be even hard. harder for you, Brian. We're going to talk to you in, in more detail in a minute about that because obviously, you know with Steve, Steve with Steve, do you know what I mean? It's like he's got his in circle of in. You're a public figure. So we're going to talk about that in a lot more because the pressure I can imagine, and rightly or wrongly, but I can guess it must be incredible to be under that, that limelight, spotlight out there, and be feeling the way that you were feeling. Yeah, but I, I feel for Steve, so, but because you, you, you're within yourself and you don't know how other people around you are going to react mm. you know you don't know if to say something to somebody you get all agitated about it isn't oh, it? it's yeah. a terrible well, people thing. coming in the bar every day and, oh where's steve 
and yeah. the staff had said, oh, he's not very well, he's upstairs. And then people start thinking, oh, what's wrong with you and everything else? But you, they didn't know because he never told them. And people are there and caring, but you have to tell them. And I didn't tell them, so it was, mm, that was my own I fault. I was keeping that. myself from bottling it up. You say there about you were bottling it up. I mean, I'm going to ask this question. So you're sat there, you're, you're dealing with this on your own. You don't really know about who to talk to or how to talk to someone. I mean, did you ever have the inevitable thought go through your mind where you thought, you know what, I've had enough of this? Yes. And, and what made you not go through with it? Was it, were, did, did you bottle out? Were you, were you coward about it? Or were you think, no, I've got to get this sorted out? I mean, what, what went through your mind? I took a lot of sleeping tablets one night right. and uh, for some reason my son rang me up and I told him I was just going to go to sleep. I'd taken a hundred actually wow. and I thought well I'm not going to wake up from them and for some wrong reason my son rang me from England and this was just before I passed out or whatever else and I actually told him what I'd done and he got somebody to come and take me to hospital and they pumped me out Yeah. and I survived obviously but they treat you like um, You've got disease, or you, you're crazy or mental in hospital because you've done something like this. They don't treat you for what's actually wrong with you. Uh, you're depressed because of your illness, or your treatments, and everything mm. else that's gone in your life. It, they're not giving you the right treatment, I don't think. Mm. Mark, you, you've suffered through uh, relationship issues. I mean, you've, you've been at an all-time low when it came to New Year's Eve, and you, you're sitting there on your own, having you know gone through an incredible breakup and lost a lot. You know. What went through your mind? Because I, I can imagine a lot of people watching this, they also will have had the, the relationship breakdowns, particularly out here. I mean, how did that affect you? What, what was going through your mind? Well, just let me say, I, I was in a relationship for 10 years. We had a couple of kids. Yeah. My son was probably about seven, my daughter um, four. Um, 2006 wasn't a great year. We drifted apart and I kind of knew you know, by the end of 2006, we were done and dusted, and I, yeah. just, I just wanted to get through to the end of the year, and then we could all just, you know, just go our separate ways. Mm. Uh, Christmas Day came along, which also happens to be my birthday. The removal van turned up, and I had to help my family move all the furniture into rem the removal van, and then wave as it drove away, left me with one armchair, um, a pillow, and, a, and a, some kind wow. of blanket. So I spent uh, not the greatest uh, Christmas day in 2006, alone in a house with just a blanket and, and, a, and an armchair and my birthday. Um, a few years later, it, a few days later, it was uh, New Year and everyone, you know, I did f find myself in a bar and there were balloons being popped, fireworks crackling in the sky. And I just sat there and you know, everyone was jumping around. A few people did try to, a few of the girls came over and, I, and, uh, they, they, and they realised they had to leave me on my mm. own and I just, you know, I just, I just got through it. and. Um, yeah, it wasn't the great, greatest Christmas or New Year, 2006. I mean, <clears throat> Thailand, unfortunately, is notorious for these these sort of weddings, relationships that do go wrong. And, and it, it's sad because no matter what happens, it's two human beings that are going through this turmoil and breaking up. And it is emotional and it is, it is very difficult. Did you find that you could talk to your friends or were you worried that your friends would say, oh, well, we told you so kind of thing? I couldn't talk to anybody. I couldn't talk to my family in England. I couldn't talk to my dad. I didn't want to spoil their Christmas, their New Year and everything. I, I just didn't talk to anybody um, until I went back to work yeah. after, after, the, after the holidays. And, and I just had to speak to, to my bosses and say, look, I'll just let you know that uh, uh, things have changed for me at, at home right now. But I didn't tell anyone else. I didn't tell my family. Maybe it was a couple of years before I mentioned it to anyone. And my dad didn't find out. I never told my dad. Mm. I, didn't, I don't think he found out, although he sensed something was going on. He didn't find out. I don't Maybe it was five or six years later. Wow, that long. I, I just, well, wow. he had his own issues. I mean, he was dealing with his things. I left to come to Thailand to try and do something different. Um, he supported me all, 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 all mm. the way, but I didn't want to say to dad, look, I've this has happened i didn't want to you don't want to pest for anybody else for your problems i didn't want him to worry about it my dad's a big warrior he worries all the time and i didn't want him to worry about it i mean you're at an all-time low you're at a situation where obviously your relationships come to an end you've lost your house etc and you're dealing with that situation over what is probably the time of of the year when everyone should be celebrating mm -hmm. Did you ever think, do you know what, I need to just call it a day in Thailand, I've had my days and just go back? Or, I mean, did you want to like chuck the towel and say, that's it, I've done with Thailand, it's, it's been a negative rather than a positive and go back to, to England or to another country? No, I never had that thought. 
I cannot imagine living anywhere else in the world. I've been to America, Canada, all over Europe, many, many places. I cannot imagine living anywhere else in the so world. So no matter how bad it was, this was always going to be your home. Yeah. Fantastic. 100%. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, going through a, a, a divorce and losing everything, I suppose it could be quite easy to sit there and feel sorry for yourself. There was no time. I went back to work and I, I just, just got down to working again and um, just just took it out of my mind. I, you know, sometimes the, the weekends... That's a very important point. The weekends mm. where it might have been a little bit difficult. You do need something here to you occupy need your mind. But I, I, just, I, just, I just kept busy and just, <clears throat> just kept working through things. And So had you not had the work, had you not been in a position where you were mentally keeping yourself busy and physically out there doing stuff, I mean, do you think that would have had a massive effect on how you dealt with that? It, I might have, um, yeah, I could have drunk a lot more, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, I only drink on, 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 on the weekends. Um, I've always tried to maintain that, that kind of, that, that way of living because it's, it's, every day's a party here and you can join a party every day and get mm. drunk and stuff like that. But I didn't, I just had a drink on the weekends. And, that and of me. course, the next stage was obviously you met Brian and you mm -hmm. were very close with Brian and Moving yeah. on to you now, Brian, we, we spoke about Steve with his cancer and, and Mark with his breakup, etc. Mm. <clears throat> and I guess it must have been quite surreal for you being with Brian, being the person that Brian was, you know, a superstars hero, a, you know, judo, the, the king of judo, you know, he was mm. just up there. Yeah. And yet, Brian, you were suffering with depression, weren't you? Oh, uh, yeah, but it, it wasn't exactly at the... It wasn't, <coughs> it wasn't when we first it met. It wasn't when we first I, met. I, I first, I first, when I first met Brian, which was probably in about October 2016, um, he was a he was the superstar. Yeah. I, I knew. Hello, what can I do you for? And all that yeah. st kind of stuff. And I, yeah. said, well, I, I said, what can I do you for? So we had a little what can you do you for thing session, and then we we talked about writing his book, and um, we started that. We started the process. Um, that was all great. It and was and, great and, we, and we were going along. Yeah. We went we went um, from like October, November, December, January, February, yeah, 2017, and then in March. 2017 I got a call from Brian he was at the hospital and it, what, what was it a gallstone yeah, I had a, well no I had a, a kidney stone a kidney stone and it just became a different person it just became mm. completely different and a few of the guys here who knew Brian they'd known him longer than 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 I knew Brian and we were they were they were talking what what's happened what's happened to Brian what's wrong with Brian mm. I mean now and again he would come out with the card tricks and he'd be the bubbly mm. Brian that with that we all know mm. but there are other times he, he, he would just it had a vacant look on his face mm. and I thought, well, what's wrong? What's going on? And I mean, how are you dealing with that, bro? I mean, well, you know, it, being the person you were, the but, person but, everyone looked to. I mean. Let me explain why, why it happened. I, <clears throat> I went into hospital to get a simple kidney stone operation removed. Yeah. And when they did the cardio, uh, cardiogram on the chest, the, the doctor come back and uh, the, he said, oh, you need to speak to the specialist. So the specialist came into mm. the room while I was there with my wife and two other people. And he told me categorically um, that I didn't have long to live. Cool. Wow. So that, that does shock you. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, that's the not I, I six, think it's, it? it shocks you very... It's like uh, getting an electric shock quickly rather than what mm. Steve went through about, yeah. mm. you know, being told you've got cancer and you don't know when it's, you know... Yeah. And I'm thinking, I mean, this can't be right. I mean, the guy that was in there with his wife and my wife, he actually said, you could die any second, we can't do the operation. Anyway, four days later, I'm back in England. I went to see Mr. Jackson at London Bridge Hospital. He uh, gave me all the same, the same um, and more, uh, uh, you know, procedures to yeah. go through. And he said to me, he said, look, he said, it, it is very dangerous. He said, there's no question about it. But, and it's, it's the aorta is, is bulged. He said, it's, but he said, it's not, it's not life threatening yet. Okay. Yet. Okay. He said it is, but not. it's okay at the moment. He said, what I want to do is leave it for nine months, have another, you know, sitting in the tube thing, and go yeah. through the tube. Um, and I think that's what started started off in my brain. I'm thinking now, oh, you know, I'm in England. Can I get back to Thailand? Can I do that? And mm. you start to worry. Um, but, and you think this thing is in and you think it's coming, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. And I think that's what started me off. But it's a bit different from Steve and... And um, Mark, because you know, he, he, he weren't told he was going to die immediately, and, mm. and now he's thinking, Gosh, am I going yeah. to die? He's thinking, Am I going to die? Mm. I mean, being but, in I've the position, told. being the position you're in, Brian, I mean, you know, 
as, as we've already mentioned, you know, from a man to be able to put his heart on his sleeve and say, guys, this is how I'm feeling, that's a hard enough task as it is. But you're just not any man, are you? Because you are I, I, in the public eye. I was lucky I, had, I you know, had Mark around me at the time. Yeah, but I mean, you are, Brian. You are in the public eye. You are someone, you know, from my, from my <clears> own, <throat> you know, I remember watching you on TV thinking, wow, like this man's incredible. So now you've not only got the pressures of dealing what you're dealing with internally, you're but hit. outside, you can't share that. You're hitting the nail right on the head. And yeah. you start to, so you start to, you start to think, oh, I, I, I used to be able to do this quite easy. Now I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm a, mm. And it, it, everything starts to play in your mind, as Steve said earlier. You start to, things start to clog, 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 and you, you start to think, Christ. Then you think, oh, I'm getting old as well, and I'm yeah. getting this, and everything kind of builds up on top of you. And I was lucky you... to have Mark around at the time and my son because um, I was, I, I could feel it coming. I got to the stage, and I've got to be honest with you all, I got to the stage where I, I phoned up um, the NHS in England, I can't remember, um, and you know, they asked me all these questions, you know, if you're suffering from depression. And yeah. The, the, one of the questions was that stuck up, d d have you ever thought about committing suicide? And I, I, I said no, but I was lying. Mm. I mean, when did you find in, your, in yourself <laughs> so, mentally, yeah. when did you find that you were able to accept that you did have depression? Because people say, oh, I'm, I'm not depressed, I'm okay. I'm just having a bad day, but you know, we, we know that eventually you have to accept the fact that, do you know what, it doesn't matter what I am, who I am, or where I've come from, I happen to have depression. When did you accept that, and what was that feeling like when you finally looked in the mirror and said, Brian, you've got depression, son, we need to sort this out. When, when did that happen? I don't know, it was, it's very difficult because it, when I, it got to a stage in my life, but I mean, that you've You've been up there, mm. and now you're down here, and you think, oh, I can't even stand the next second. I don't, what am I going to do for the next mm. two minutes? What am I going to do for the not next hour or, or next day, mm. the next two minutes? And I, mm. I was phoning Mark, I was phoning my son up, and saying, Look, for, I'm, you know, I can't even stand mm. being here. And I, he, but so Philip would say, Come and see me straight away. I come straight round, and you, and then he introduced me, funny enough, to a guy at his work that had been through the same thing and I sat with him okay. for an hour and that helped me a lot. Do you find that you had to be a different person? You Like, when you were in the room on your own, you were thinking, wow, like, what's going on? When there's a knock on the door and it's someone coming and saying, yeah, hi, I'm Brian, how are you doing? What would you like, you know, do you want to do an interview? Do you want to do this? I mean, was it very, very hard to, like, have this like, like, Jekyll and Hyde kind of situation? I, I can kind of answer this because we were in England and we were on a 100-day UK tour yeah. promoting Brian's book. We were all over the place driving to places, staying in hotels, and then uh, going on, Brian would go and give his masterclass, which is a judo term for like a, a like a, some kind of training session. Mm. So he, he would go on the mat and he, and he was electric. They treated him like he was some kind of, he is, Brian is a god of judo. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And they, 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 they was, he was just amazing on the mat. But then we, we would come off the mat and then we'd go back to the hotel, or we'd be sitting down having, uh, having, having some kind of dinner or some lunch or something, or we were walking through Leicester, Leicester Square, and one time just Brian, he broke down, he, he was mm. in tears. We had to stop, and he sat down, we sat down on a chair, and we had a, we had a chat. Mm. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was just incredible the I way think, it was. I, yeah, I think it, 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 the, the worry was in the back of my mind about the operation. Um, and then how, how it materialised was that I, was, I saw this doctor, um, and um, he unfortunately died, Mr. Jackson. He's, you can Google his name at London Bridge Hospital. And then he, I, a new doctor took over and he said to me, look, he said, you have got a problem. It is a big problem. He said, but we can fix the problem. So don't, you know, don't worry about mm. it. Don't, but you still can't stop worrying. That, mm, sure. And then, sure. I, then, then somebody said to me, well, what they do is the, there's the heart. They cut this pipe here. They take this bit of the pipe out, this big, biggest pipe in the body. They take it out and then you put a new bit of pipe in and they put you on a heart machine and this, and then you start worrying. So mm. every, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't because I didn't even have that procedure, but you start all those little things yeah. that, that people say as you, you up, Steve and, yeah. and, you know, kind question, of build up on you. Question I want to ask you guys, I mean, all three of you have been very open, very honest, and I, and I thank you for that because it's not an easy thing to talk about. And that's the purpose of this video is, you know, as you've seen with these guys here, you know, they've all got their own stories to tell. And, and the point being is it's just not easy to just say, do you know what? I actually want to talk to someone. A question I want to ask you three, and, and just, just very quickly, is when you finally took the opportunity to talk to someone, how much of a weight did that lift off your mind? How easy was it then? 
I mean, it's like the old saying, the problem shared, the problem had. Mm. And I think it's honestly true. OK. Mm. Mark? Well, for me, it was slightly different. I just got on with life and I never really, really did talk about it. Do you wish yeah. you had? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for, of course. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, probably yeah. Never had yeah. I was lucky. Yeah. I, mean, right. I, had, I had Mark and my son um, to talk to. And um, every time I talked to them, the, the whole thing seemed to cool down and then it, then it come, starts to come boil up again and then you go back to them and talk to them again. But... I, I think the final the final thing was that the, the, my doctor gave me a he said look read about this person Mr. Connell Austin he said you can Google his name he said I'm going to send you to him and he said he will he will cure it he will do it and there won't be no cutting inside or nothing he said mm. he will cure this enlarged uh, problem and as soon as that as soon as he said that and I knew then that um, you know. It, there was some end to it. Mm. I think that cooled that cooled it down. It still took a long time to get off of it. Mm. But the most important thing I think the viewers have got to understand is that you need to go and speak to someone. Yeah. Yeah. One. Number two, you need to keep yourself occupied. Right. There's, yeah. You know, like uh, some people say, read a book, play test. Do no, when this, you're in do company, that. it doesn't feel as bad. When you're on your own, it, it, you're a very lonely person. You need, and you need to get, you need to get into something and do something, like play golf or go fishing or, mm. you know, I've been doing bowls lately and stuff like that. You need to keep mm. yourself um, away from the thoughts that, that are in the back of your head. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing. I mm. think a question has to be that, you know, you've obviously, you've each had your own things to deal with and, and you know the good news is the nice thing is we're sat here and you know you, you progress really far now you're progressing forward which is fantastic in terms of people watching this now I mean you've obviously you know Steve you've dealt with cancer mentally as well as physically now you're moving forward I mean how is things now how, how's life now life's back to normal again is it I've got through my cancer I'm writing a book we're hoping to turn that into a tv or a movie and also, I'm not hoping to have a song to come out with really? as well. Movie, you, you know. Yeah. We've got the same haircut. We all right? Yeah. Hey, I, I can be his double. What you, do you, reckon? you can be a young me. Mark, yeah. I mean, you've gone through a, a terrible situation with, in your relationship. You've dealt with all that. I mean, how are things now? Great. I'm writing, helping him with his book. I've written Brian's book. That, that both Brian, we could do a movie with Brian's life. <coughs> we could do a movie, movie again? Movie with Steve's you know what I'm life. Saying? Yes, yeah, okay. You should put Vin, it all Vin, into one movie. I'm trying, I'm trying. Vinnie, Vinnie yeah. Jones wants to play his dad, so. Um. I read that, I read And do you know what, talking about Vinnie Jones, and, and this, is, this is something else. And guys, if you don't believe me, check this out. Piers Morgan interviewed Vinnie Jones about when uh, his, his wife passed away through cancer. Mm. And to see a man that, again, you know, like yourself, Brian, that's, that's out there in the public eye that millions of people look up to, and he broke down in tears with peers. I mean, it just shows, doesn't it? You know, no matter yeah, yeah. who you are or what you're doing, at the end of the day, we're all human. Mm. And we all need to reach out at times in our life. And, and luckily, there are people that you can reach out to that can help that's, you. That's a very important point. You, you know, you need someone to reach out to. Mm. I mean, I was lucky, yeah. very mm. lucky. but. Other people that are out there don't have anybody, but they should try and contact someone mm. you know, that they can reach out to. Because if you don't, then you, you, you feel even more withdrawn and lonely mm. on your own. You know? And I mean, for you, Brian, you know, you've gone through you know, massive operations, etc. You've gone through depression. I mean, how do you feel now? Are you feeling good? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I went to see Mr. Connell Austin and he said, look, he said, um, you will be the 103rd operation of this particular type that I'm going to procedure that I'm going to do on you and he said you have nothing to worry about whatsoever Fantastic. He said, you will not be on a heart um, mm. bypass machine he said you'll have open heart surgery but you have nothing to worry about and immediately you start to mm. you know all the, all the thoughts behind you yeah. and all the things happen you start to cool down off of it yeah you know? Uh, Guys, it's been incredible. No, go on, Mark, go on. How are you doing, Trevor? How am I doing? I'm good. <laughs> Anything you want to share? <laughs> uh, well, if you're referring to about my situation with uh, depression I was talking to Brian about, yeah, I mean, I, I went through depression back in London. I was living the dream. I was earning a lot of money. And uh, 100 milligram of sertraline became my best friend because I just had the car, the house, the money, all that other stuff, and it just went pear-shaped. But I'm out here now, and as you guys have said, you know, I... I uh, took help from the doctor, etc, etc, and yeah, I can honestly say it's, it's brilliant, so yeah, yeah, thank throw, you very much. Throw the sertraline away and get I your, live the get life of the beach organized. now. I'm trying to get my suntan, but I've got myself coloured in like with too many crayons, so I can't get a suntan now, but you're, you're doing okay. <laughs> guys, listen, it's been fantastic. Thank you very much, Now, before we finish, I don't want to finish on this, I want to finish on the fact that, you know, guys, if you need to talk to someone, 
you know drop me a message on the channel here we'll, we'll help you out we'll point you in the right direction if there's people you think you want to speak to but before we finish just very very briefly I want to think about the positive and the positive is this we've got a young lad he's watching this channel and he's coming over for the first time ever to Pattaya never been here before you guys have got 75 years of wisdom where are you going to send him <laughs> How old is he? <laughs> hey, he's, he's of the legal age, let's leave it at that. Where are you going to send him? Come on. Da -da 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 do you want to do the Ted Rogers? Three, no, two, one. The first thing I did when my son first came here, I took him out with me. Yeah. And I introduced him to some friends of mine at home bars. And I said, if you ever have a problem, go and see them. All right, okay. So that was my advice well, to him. That was lame. That was lame. Come on, <laughs> what about like, uh, Mark? Well, two places, the, the Temple of Truth. Okay. And soy six. <laughs> oh, I mean, talk about <laughs> black and white. Temple of Truth and soy six. Brian, don't let me down. Come on. Can I answer it? Yes. But in fact. Yes. Not, not, not in, in fact. The stage my, is yours. My son was 23 years old. He brought five boys over to stay on holiday here. To cut a long story short, I took one of them on the back of my motorbike and he took the others in the car. And on the way, I stopped in, in Beach Road, took this lad in Beach Road, the first time he'd ever been there, stopped in a bar, sat down the bar, ordered some drinks. The girl came over, she obviously fancied him as a young yeah. kid. I, get, I gave her I gave her 100 baht and said, he fancies you. So he said, Come on. Anyway, he drank the drink. I said, come, let's go. He said, no, we can't go. We can't, we can't, we can't go. He said, he said, we can't go. He said, he said I said, come, we got to go. So we drove along Beach Road a little bit. This true story. Yeah. Stopped in another bar, did exactly the same thing. Let's yeah. go, let's go. No, don't go, don't go, don't go. Got to the third bar. The God's honest truth did the same thing. Gave the, I gave the girl under the bar, said he fancies you. She was all over him. Oh, we got to go. We gave, eventually get to the bar where him and my son and all his mates yeah. were. What did he, the first thing he said to him? All the girls fancy me. <laughs> <laughs> All the girls fancy me here. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, there you go, you man. So, guys, if you're coming over, right, I'll get you in touch with him. He can say, but watch his 100 bars come out of his pocket because you know what he's up to. <laughs> guys, it's been brilliant. Thank you so much indeed. It really that has been fantastic. Steve, thank, thank you again, my friend. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, pleasure, young and man. Thank you, sir. Thank Good. you very much indeed. Guys, that's it. So, uh, on a serious note, please. Take, take heed of what we've been talking about today. It takes a lot of courage to come forward and to open up and to be honest about things. So please, you know, don't hide. Get in touch. If you want email addresses, whatever, I'm sure these guys will connect with you and help you through their stories, whatever, and try and guide you through what they've been through. Uh, contact me on the channel and uh, I can also try that for you as well and, and help you out. Fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. As always, please remember to hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon. Uh, be notified when we bring out a new video. Check out our members area and join our Discord group. There's over 2,000 people on there, just like you guys, with an interest in this wonderful city that we're lucky enough to call home. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And please, as always, wherever you are in the world, stay safe. Subscribe. The coffee's great. <laughs> <laughs>